Hi Danny. Hi Matt. Go Gogs. Levi. Hi Kevin. Danny Bayliss. Oh good, you've got your cowboy tools. That's the main thing. Good man. Ha! <laughs> Hello Ian, how are you? All right, David. Thank you very much. Evening, Mr. Wouldn't it be nice? And Wayne, Steve Jobbins, hi. Hi, good turn, Max. Hello, Max. Good evening. Hello, Suzette. Good evening, and welcome, Bill. Hello, Ron. How are you? Good man. Stephen, correct. All right, Steve. <laughs> All right, Stephen Jobbins and Matt. I'm fine, thanks. Hot, cut sat at leisure. Good evening. Hello, Michael. Uh, <coughs> Nathan, how are you? There is a, I think it's about an eight second lag. So, uh, hi, long Shay. How are you, mate? You made it. Good man. Um, keep the cup on the goblet, Mike. I'll try, Ian, but I don't really care if it doesn't stay on. <laughs> uh, hello, Zeke from Western. From West North Carolina, hello there. I've just got a two bar a bit. Uh, Captain Codpiece, hello mate, how are you? Hello Darren. Oh, Darren from work, how are you? Um, <laughs> Larry Anderson, greetings, thank you very much. Greetings to you too. How long have I been setting it up, says Max? Um, three days from the start to finish, I suppose. A lot of tweaking today. All right, Dewey. How are you, mate? And John. How are you, John? John Carroll, Mason. Um, yes, today's basically been um, doing a bit with the lighting, trying to improve the lighting so that my bald head doesn't show too much of a, a glisten. Um, yeah, it's it is what it is. Um, I'll uh, Hassan. How are you? Nice to see you. Mr. Dave Rothwell, my old mate Dave from Canada. Hello Dave, how are you? Give my love to Fee. Um, I've just run through the camera angles I've managed today. Uh, this is obviously the laptop. Um, then we've got that view there and then the overhead. And that's all I'm going with at the moment. And uh, hopefully we'll go through, it'll be okay. Hello David from North Wales, good man, how are you? And Cathal Finery, hello hello from Ireland, hello to you from Bedfordshire. Jordan Woodworks, all right Bruce, how are you? Uh, Ronnie, my word, a lot of people turning up. Ian, how are you mate, Ian Blay? Mike, have you ever done a video on here and says it's going live 7.32? I guess this is the one to watch. Uh, this is the one, yes. I, I'm not too. <laughs> I did put up um, that it would be going live at 7:30, um, but this is this is that one. So hopefully, um, I'll learn how to do it properly next time. But uh, yeah, this is the one that's going live. I just hope other people aren't on the other one. That's the problem. But they'll get the message hopefully when no one turns up. Um, I'm not making any comment there, Matt. <laughs> Thanks for the offer, mate. We'll see how we go. <laughs> yeah. Evening, Mr. Byers. John Byers, how are you? Nice to see you. Um, <clears throat> so, a quick look down here a minute. As I say, you must excuse me going off. Good grief, there's 90 people already. That's incredible. You are a wonderful bunch of people, all I can say is. Um, I've had a few requests to make the goblet fly tonight, but um, what I'm going to say is nothing, and if it does, I'll say there we are, I meant to do it. I think that's the best way to look at it. What I intend to do, good evening, shop workshop, uh, yeah, shop dog workshop. Never turned a goblet. Well, hopefully I'll show you how not to do it. So if you do everything opposite to what I suggest, then you'll be okay. Tubby Turner, good evening, how are you? Uh, 
yeah good point actually if you um, if you do like this give it a thumbs up it's always nice to know um, <coughs> terrible thing to say but there is a little dollar sign at the bottom of the the chat window uh, and if you feel at the end of the day or during during the session that it's been worthwhile any contributions will be gratefully received and what I shall be doing hello Wayne how are you mate and Wayne's starting his at 8 o'clock, so you can chop between the two of us, that sounds good. Um, yeah. Anything that is donated or con contributed over these live streams I do will be going into kit to hopefully improve the ex experience. Um, so hopefully you will benefit for it, buy it as well. Right, well. It's not due to start till 7.30, so I'm not going to do anything until then. I'll give you a quick rundown of what I intend to do. And I'll go back to the laptop so you can see me. There we are. That's better, isn't it? Um, what I intend to do is to go through my methods of turning a goblet from this piece of wood here to a goblet. Depending on time and how things go, I'm, I'm not that worried about finishing on this particular video. Um, <clears throat> we'll just see how it goes and if I don't do the sanding and finishing um, because time is not allowing then I will go through the method that I use and I, I think I, I'm planning on about an hour, hour and a half in total maybe longer if necessary um, I'm going to do let's say the bowl of the goblet first and then stop for a few questions and have a little break from turning with regards to yourselves any questions coming up regarding questions just to let you know that I am uh, not able obviously to see the comments when I'm turning <coughs> so I'll be giving a commentary hopefully uh, you'll understand what I'm saying so if you ask questions during the time I'm actually on the lathe I won't see them so may I respectfully suggest that you keep any questions for uh, I'll have at least a couple of um, Q&A sections four questions relative to this turning and anything else as well um, and that's how I intend to do it because as I say there's nobody else bar me looking at what's going on and if I should miss anybody that joins except my humble apologies um, I obviously am extremely grateful for anybody that has nothing better to do than watch me uh, Mark the Gentle Wood Turner good evening Mark how are you Just going off camera to have a vape. <laughs> Shouldn't do that, it's naughty. I remember when I did my first ever demo at UKIS back in 2016, the first ever public demo I'd ever done. I've only done three in total, I think. Um, I was obviously extremely nervous. I'm, I'm quite nervous now, actually, although in my, my own workshop, in my garage, it is a different situation. Um, and I kept on going down below the lathe as if I was looking for something and having a, a quick vape to calm my nerves. I don't know what it's like with you, but it's been 20, in the UK anyway, here it's been 28 degrees today, and uh, in my garage it's extremely warm at the moment. It is currently 31 degrees here at the moment in this garage workshop. Um, I think I've got, uh, Ian, you need super chat. I think I've got super chat, mate. It's... Uh, Yeah, it's it's live. <laughs> DL Woodart, yes, definitely a little warm. What do you remember well, Ian? So many things I've done that you'll remember well. Yeah, plenty of fluids. Um, I'm on the, the Diet Coke, laced with vodka. No, not really. Simon Jones. Hello, Simon. How are you? Nice to see you, mate. 
Rob CP, thank you very much indeed. You are an absolute star. That's my very first contribution. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate that. Douglas Mungham, I live by the sea, Walton on the knees, where the great but in total lockdown. Yeah, tell me about it. It's not so bad here, well I say not so bad, obviously we're still uh, Wayne, Bigfoot, how are you? How are you mate? Thank you Lee, much appreciated, thank you sir. Um, yeah, we're obviously on lockdown like the rest of the UK, but um, good evening Steve Robbins, how are you? Good, I'm glad you're looking forward to it mate, hope I, uh, I don't disappoint. Yeah, the, uh, the lockdown side of things, it's eased slightly, um, but uh, I've just been informed I'm being furloughed for at least another week from ne uh, next week. So, um, Suzette, thank you very much indeed, my love. That's very kind of you. Chris Nunn, hi, how are you? Are you well? And uh, Stephen Rickett, I'd like you to chuck your stand behind you. Uh, that actually... <laughs> I did that about two years ago. There was about six years of, of not actually having it as I wanted it, and I finally got it. So it's only plywood glued, and it's just slotted in. Uh, it works very well. Okay. Extending till August, Matt. That's incredible. Incredible. Um, and I, I'm actually, next week will be my ninth week. Thank you, Stephen Newbold. Very kind. Thank you. Um, yeah, but l luckily, I don't get bored. I've actually need needed in all the things that my wife asked me to do as well. Nearly. Not completely, but almost there. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Silk. That's not good news, my friend. You snapped a skew? My God. Putting too much pressure on it, Mark. <laughs> hey, Steve Jeremiah. How are you, Steve? Are you okay, mate? Thanks for joining me. My word. There's 156 people here at the moment. I think in a couple of minutes we'll start. Um, as I said, if you can remember what, what I said about questions, um, this is this is intended for the newer turner, uh, but not not um, exclusively, obviously. So I will be going through my methods from uh, and my thought process, such as it is with my single brain cell, um, and hopefully you'll find it interesting as a new turner and won't get too bored if you're a more experienced turner. <coughs> Mick. <laughs> Hello Mick Stratton, how are you? Yes, don't, don't say that, she wants probably well, it's not shoes, it's handbags with Muriel. <laughs> What's my full-time job? Um, I'm a bus driver, actually. That's my full-time job. Right, what, I, what I'll do, I'll make a start, and um, good evening Skipper, how are you? I'll make a start, and we'll take a break at a certain point, and I can ask any questions, and I'll do my, hopefully the sound will be okay, I must keep my voice down. So, what I'm going to be doing is turning this piece of chestnut and it's three inches square or 20 to 75 centi uh, 75 millimeters square by 10 inches long which is 250 mil approximately and that is what I'm going to be turning so the first job is to get this piece to round and I'm going to be putting it between centers and I'll go to the overhead camera now so I won't be seeing anything on the chat thank you Gary much appreciated. So I'll go to the camera that's over the lathe and what I'll be doing is first of all finding the centre and there are various methods for 
find in the center of a square piece of wood. I find the easiest method is to use a center finder. They're very, very cheap. You merely put it on the piece, draw a line four times. Don't turn the center finder, turn the piece. That way you'll get as near to the center as you can. And also make sure that you've got lead in your pencil, as the man said. So we do that four times and then you can see that it's not perfectly square I don't know if the camera will pick that up so what you do then you've got a little tiny square and you eyeball it and make a mark and that's one center and do the same on the other side the nice thing about this actually uh, compared to doing a live demo that I've done before is that I have an hour and uh, it's very time sensitive I mean, if people fall asleep and they go home, that's up to them. But it's not, if I don't finish what I intend to finish, it doesn't matter. There's always tomorrow or next week or whenever to do, to finish the job. So it's completely not time sensitive. Okay, and what I'll be using are stead centers. Now this is something interesting for the newer turner. Stead centers have a spring-loaded center and you can see there and that center is on a spring as is the drive center now the beauty of these especially for the newer turner is when you mount it and we'll just mount it now between centers bring up the tailstock lock it down and bring it in on center there we go now there's no pressure there at all it's just sitting like that now, and you must excuse the odd bit of traffic, because since the lockdown has been eased, there's a bit more traffic coming into our village. When you tighten up, I'll just ease off, there's nothing. Now, there's no drive at all. Now, as I tighten that up a bit, if I turn the spindle, there's a bit of drive. Now, obviously, you can turn it right in, which is what I normally do, but when you're a newer turner, when you're doing something like this, if you've just got it very lightly pinched to your piece, should you get a catch, what's going to happen is you're not going to get a, a catch that's going to cause any problem at all. All that will happen is, is that the work will spin because it's very, very lightly, there's very little pressure. And I'll demonstrate that for you. And this will be a catch that is meant to be. Face protection, obviously, of paramount importance. Now there are several ways as well that you can actually rough down a piece to round, because the idea now is to rough this piece to round, form a tenon on the end, and then a dovetail tenon in this case, and then put it in the chuck, and then mount it in the chuck. So again, I did a video a little while ago about speed. Never turn over what you're not happy with, obviously, but especially in a situation here where you've got corners and you want to get the corners off. Now, if you start, let's just say this is just 200 revs, you can see how it's banging. Now, if I turn that up to, let's say, 1,000 revs, and each one of those bangs there is air in between that so the faster you go and I'm not I'm not saying for one minute that you should go extremely fast but it's a better experience and less likely to catch so what I'm going to do now is turn this at around a thousand revs and I'm going to purposely catch it okay now I've got very light very very light here okay so we would start going through. Now let's just say I catch it. See that? It stops. And all you have to do, because if I hold the drive, that will actually spin now. I'm, I'm locking the drive with my hand, so that is now spinning. Uh, spinning without any drive at all. All you do is tighten up the tailstock, put a bit more pressure on it, and then you're back to doing the job you want to do which is roughing down so it's a very safe way of mounting between centers okay so as I say there are various methods of actually rubbing down the most 
common is using a spindle roughing gouge and literally just rub the bevel, lift the handle till you get a cut and move. I'd like to go a bit quicker than that if I may. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm doing now about 1300 grades. Okay. There's no rush, just nibble away, nibble away, nibble away. I'm doing this part on purpose because I'm going to show you another couple of ways of being able to rough down. But the easiest is using a spindle roughing gun. Now that bit is virtually round, you know. Okay. Can somebody just answer me? Is the sound... Good evening, Harold. How are you? Um, is the sound okay? If someone could just say yes. I know it's an eight-second lag, but I would appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, Joseph. How are you, my friend? Are you well? Okay. Yes, so... Uh, oh, that's good. Okay, the sound's fine. It might get a bit distorted when um, I'm turning. Okay, so we've used the spindle roughing gouge there. Now, surprisingly enough, and this isn't... I'm not doing this as a hero move, but you can actually use the skew. So all I'm doing here is showing you the different methods that you can use. Now with the skew, the same thing. You rub, this is just a three quarter inch, okay? So you rub the bevel, lift the handle. This is a radius skew, which I prefer. Um, so in actual fact, this part here, I have ground and that straight across. So it won't be a straight uh, roughing down, but the idea is there. So all you do is rub the bevel and then lift the handle just lift the handle into the wood. No rush. Lift the handle into the wood and then move the handle across. So we'll just do this bit now. So that is another way. I'm only showing you this to show, it's not round obviously yet, but it's getting there, um, of the different ways you can actually rough a piece out. And the other way of doing it is using the bowl gouge. And again, with that, you just, this is a 3 8 bowl gouge, and all you would do is you take the corners off, and you're moving your body, And then we run the fog, go in again. This method is especially useful when you've got a, a very uneven piece of wood because you haven't got such a large blade contacting the different rooms. So that's just to show you that you can use various tools to actually rough down. And I'll finish off now with the traditional method, which I do actually prefer most times. And the single roughing gouge also leaves, which I'll show you, hopefully, when you've got it to run, it leaves a very good surface as well. Stop the lathe move your tool rest in. We always stop the lathe, don't we everybody, when we move the tool rest. Okay, now that's virtually, that was a fairly heavy cut. That's, that's round enough for anything that you need to be doing. Now, I don't know if the camera picks up the you can see these ridges here, that's because I'm going too quickly across the wood for the speed of the machine. Now I'm doing, I think, 14, 1500 revs, so that's more than adequate. So I must slow my traverse across the piece to improve the surface. Now chestnut is quite a wide-grained wood anyway, 
so um, it's not going to have such a smooth finish as let's say you or uh, Sapili but if you can see that now I'll try if you just turn rub the bevel turn the tool so that you're actually cutting at approximately 45 degrees lift the handle get your cut and a nice if I stop there you'll be able to see the difference hopefully between there and there so it's a good tool to get a, a decent finish but don't forget most if not all of this wood is going to be turned away okay so we've got to a situation now where we've got our piece round and the next job is to turn a tenon to fit it into my four jaw chuck and that's going to be a dovetail tenon now to do that i'm going to be using a parting tool um, this is just an ordinary uh, parting tool i'm not actually sure what the measurement is on this uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's five mil five mil parting tool okay so again when you're doing a tenon it's very important to get the size correct for your specific jaw set and every jaw set you buy will have the ideal measurements that you need to do now what I do is use a pair of calipers now these are set at the correct um, diameter so I always start at the end and get that virtually right and just square that little bit off there and again, same sort of idea, if you rub the bevel and then lift the handle and keep it at 90 degrees, just chase that off, just down to there. And then, there are two ways of doing this. You can, a lot of people don't like doing it, which is fair enough, and I wouldn't advocate doing it if you're not happy. These... Um, Turn this off a minute for the newer turner again the ends of these calipers have been rounded over so they won't catch and when when i do a, a a measurement like this i will just lightly hold them this way um until i get the correct size but there's absolutely nothing wrong in doing it this way just stopping take a bit stop the lathe and check a little bit more to go and because this is a beginner's guide not again a beginner's guide but a newer turner's uh, video we'll do it the way that i would advocate you do it when you start just got a little bit more to go when you try anything new i honestly advocate doing everything slowly Whoops, let's see. Now, what's happened here is exactly the same thing that happened when I was at UKIS. Because I was talking, I've actually got too big a tenon. But that's not a problem. I could say this was done on purpose, but it wasn't. But that's why I always do the end, because it, it's not a problem. I can get rid of that. Start again. get the tenon. There we go. And we shall make that here. Now I've got a feeling <laughs> I've done exactly the same thing that I did at UKIS. And if I have I don't care. Excuse me for a minute, I'm just going to check. <laughs> no, I haven't. That's good news, isn't it? Okay, so now take out your live uh, centre from the, uh, take out your drive centre from the tailstock. Chuck. 
keep your live center in and the reason for that will become apparent in a moment. It helps you to center the piece when you put it back. Now what I've got to do here, you can see that there, whoops, where are we? Back to front. There's a little bit too much of a little nib there, so I'll just go off camera for two seconds and take that off on the bandsaw. So that's taken that away now. So the most important thing when you put anything into a chuck is to make sure that the surfaces at the front of the jaws are tight against your shoulder, like that. Now the thing is that, like so, okay, and then tighten up. Now what you do now is bring up your tailstock and just bring your tailstock into play with a bit of pressure and now you can tighten up your jaws. And you can see there's a very small gap there in the jaws and that will and then turn him on and that should be running smooth and then remove the tailstock and that's fine. But keep the tail stock for this up, up, up to this moment. Now what we're going to do now is start to shape the bowl. Now what I was saying um, on Facebook, the idea of this is to give the newer turners an idea of my thought process. Well, the rule of thirds does apply to a point. If you consider that the one third would be the bowl, the other third could be the stem and then you've got the foot. There are many different designs. Some people like a, con a convex um, shape to the foot, which I personally prefer a concave. I like it to flow with lines. Now we're not going to do a thin stem goblet, that's not the point of this exercise. The point of this, e of this exercise is to do a basic goblet. So what I do now, I take my half inch spindle gouge, you can use a bowl gouge, half inch bowl gouge, you could use a 3 8 spindle gouge but they really don't have an awful lot of meat in the um, in the stock so I would prefer to suggest use either a 3 8 spindle, uh, 3 8 bowl gouge which is a thicker stock than the 3 8 spindle gouge or indeed a half inch spindle gouge like I'm using now. Now the whole idea on this is just to get some idea of um, shape, just a very rough shape ready for hollowing because you want to leave as much meat on the goblet as you can for when you're hollowing and that gives much more stability while you're taking out the wood of the bowl. Now I'm looking at something of that sort of a nature and I'm just going to do a nice simple um, round over. I hope that's not too light because I can't see. I've had to alter all the lighting by covering it up so that you get a, the best possible picture. Now I'm turning at um, 1600 revs and again just rub the bevel, lift your handle, get the cut, come over, lift the handle and just turn and the same on this, we'll just keep going, nothing major, just a nice easy shape. And the same here. I just want to get my basic shape sorted out. A bit of a ridge there. A little ridge like that is not a great problem because that will sand out nice and easily. Just get rid of that little ridge there. Pick up the cut nice and easy. Nothing, no rush.
Yeah, that's about right. Heavy cuts there just to get rid of that. Clear some of the wood away. And now we've got to just bring it down a little bit. Just to see if that shape is going to work. And as you're going, as you go down to here, you lift your handle and turn. Turn the flute so that you're following the line that you want to follow. Let's get rid of that little... That's there. Yeah, that's fine. So that is going to be the basic shape of the bowl. Now it comes to the hollowing stage. And the reason we do this, when I've hollowed the inside, then I'll actually would sand it and finish it so the inside is then finished. And I'll go into the voids and where it falls at that as we get to that stage. So take your tailstock away and don't forget to take out your live centre. And the reason for that is I've got many a, a jab from the live centre in my elbow. So what we've got to do now is hollow. Now there are again various methods for hollowing. I'm not going to use carbide, which I do use quite often. I use the uh, Simon Hope 6mm mini carbide for hollowing goblets quite often. But we've got to stick to traditional tools. Um, at this particular stage, I'm starting to sweat because it's very hot in here. It's now gone up to 32 degrees. Um, shall I say, are there any questions at this stage before we do any hollowing out? It gives me a chance to have a quick drink. Any questions for a second? Nice one, Frederick. Walnuts are lovely wood. Lovely wood to turn. Just change the camera again. There we go. So, has anybody got any questions up to now? If not, that's great. Nets at the ready. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for your confidence. <laughs> What colour will you dye it? Um, right, Nisha, I refuse to answer that question on the grounds it might incriminate me. Um, I might ebonise it black when I get some spray. <laughs> Hi, Oreo from Minnesota. How are you? You do it blue, would you, Jim? Nice one. Bit of heckling from Joseph. That's good as well. Spindle gouges can't replace bowl gouges. You can't, you can't bowl gouges replace spindle gouges. Um, yeah, a spindle gouge won't replace a bowl gouge, obviously, it hasn't got the strength, but you can do most things with a bowl gouge, that you could, uh, with a 3 8 bowl gouge, or indeed um, a quarter inch bowl gouge that you could do uh, with a spindle gouge, quite agree. Evening, Ma uh, <laughs> evening, Mike. evening Martin, how are you? Hello Terry, are you well? Hi Mel from Missouri, nice to see you. Mike Hammond, natural wax for me, Mike. Yeah, me too. Nine times out of ten, I, I won't actually colour anything. But I do enjoy colouring, and I certainly uh, appreciate the uh, techniques that people use. Hi, Mr Scarlett. How are you, Phil? How many years have I been turning Oreo? I've been turning seven years. You wouldn't believe it, though, would you? Let's have a look. I'm missing some of these comments now. Let's go back a little bit. I can't keep up with you. <laughs> Never mind. Hi Jim Connor, how are you? As, I, uh, as I've explained, I'm on my own, uh, oh shame isn't it, I'm on my own and I can't keep up with uh, all the uh, comments on trade but hopefully I'm not missing anything too important. Good evening Martin Graham, uh, Graham how are you? Nice to see you, thanks for coming. What's a good finish to use for drinking form? I knew that was going to be asked. Very good, very, very, very good question Mel Bryan. I have never actually turned a goblet for use, um, but there are some very good propriety, proprietary finishes which are water resistant, not waterproof, but water resistant. Um, I don't know them offhand because I've never used them. Uh, there are various, um, as I say, finishes that you can use. I have heard people use resin as well, uh, coat the inside of a vessel with resin and that makes it water, uh, water resistant as well. Uh, somebody did say that they've even used CA glue. I'm not quite sure I would be happy with that, but um, each to his own. I wouldn't recommend that at all.
Robin, hello Robin. How are you? Lovely to see you. I'm honoured. And hello Carl. I am honoured to see you, young man. Even as though you have got a, a fresh face now. <laughs> Trying to keep looking young, Carl, aren't you? I can see that. Mr Pooley, how are you? You are, um, in answer to your question regarding uh, resin or rusting's plastic coat, that was the word, I couldn't think of the plastic coat. Thanks Chris, Mr Pooley, because Chris does quite a few uh, goblets and chalices for drinking out of. <coughs> beeswax as well is a good, it, I, I wouldn't, I don't know about beeswax being waterproof, I must be uh, water resistant, I, I couldn't honestly say. Barry Cook, how are you? Just wax for you Barry, yes I agree. I have a good result using bar top resin. Dave Rothwell from Canada, he makes a lot of uh, bar requisites, let's put it that way, and he uses a good bar top resin. Um, I would think that resin obviously is, is pretty water resistant. Um, I think well, Carl Jacobson's on, which I'm honoured, but um, Carl's made a few basins as well, and I think he's used a resin as well. Uh, I don't know if it's clear coat, I don't know what it's called, but. Um, Maybe Carl will put it up in, in chat for those of you who are interested. Hi Rod, how are you? Nice to see you. Byron Patterson, butchered block, yeah, butchered block conditioner, I would assume would be, ah right, okay. Yeah, water resistant as opposed to waterproof, yeah, okay, I'll accept that, that's fine. Beeswax mineral oil and carbonara bean oil, right, okay. Yeah, we won't be Wednesday night you hear anything good about, David. <laughs> Still at work in the US and got, got, oh, well done, thank you. 1964 target, that's great, thank you. Hello Paul, how are you? What do I do with all my finished pieces? Uh, burn them normally. I get, I, I'm running out of family and friends, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, I do sell a few things, but not much, not much. Paul Ralph, hello Paul, how are you? My wife is watching with me over our eight year anniversary. You need to get out more, Paul. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Oh dear. Richard Peeling, yes, like the silver birch is great to turn up and done that. Are you using butcher block conditioner or shellac on your beard? Uh, no, in actual fact I'm not. I, I use some Yorkshire grit to uh, get it a bit finer, to get rid of the wiry bits. And I do a bit of a bit of hand machine microcrystalline. That normally does it. Um, <laughs> you haven't missed anything, Andy. ARC Woodcraft. Nothing to miss, my friend. Nothing to miss at all. This is for uh, this is for Andy's benefit. I'll just change. I'm showing off now. I can change cameras on my own. Look, that's as far as I've got. Look, Andy. I've just just turned it around, mate, and formed the uh, the bowl. And now I've got to go hollow it out. A couple of minutes, I'll hollow it out. Miss T, how are you? Good evening to you, my dear, again. As I say, I have to apologise to people if I'm missing you or I. Funnels, thank you, Terry. No, we don't have funnels. Just just on me bowls. <laughs> I have flying goblets, mate. Actually, you should, uh, I should put that down a bit so you can see the full glory of this T-shirt. Look at that. Wonderful. And these, I bought this off Martin Saban Smith's Myths website and they're brilliant so uh, I'm now an honorary member. You make bird houses for outdoors right, sycamore and walnut will soak them 24 hours in mineral oil and repel water for at least two seconds. Really that's great. I, I suppose it'd be okay to drink out of them wouldn't it to, to use use that method for that Rod. Yeah that's a, that's a good one thanks for the tip. Hello Glenn Crandall how are you? Steve Robbins, hello from his tea, John Keys. Well, I'm absolutely awe-inspired. There are 300 people watching now. Thank you so much. I really, I can't believe. I know you're all here just to watch me blow this thing up. Um, and if I do, I do. Jim Overton, how are you? <laughs> the old silverback. Watch it, you. Watch it, Tubbs. <laughs> Right, okay, i better get on, I think. Uh, what I'm going to be doing now is, I won't be looking at the chat, 
I'll change the camera angle to the end on cam. Okay, I've got a lot of work to do with cameras and uh, all the rest of it and getting the right angles and everything. So uh, bear with me on that one. Okay, hollowing out the bowl. There are several methods. My, my serious advice to the newer turner is to ensure that you drill a depth hole. Now how you obtain that depth hole is up to you. Let's get rid of this to a rest for a minute. There are several ways and I will show you the ways that I use. The first method which I don't suppose I could really recommend to a newer turner. I mean, I put that, I just epoxy this drill bit into a little handle, and that allows me to do it, to do a depth hole by hand. Because again, for the newer turners, I'm not going to keep saying for the newer turners. I'm just going to carry on blabbing. Um, the centre of any spinning piece is, is virtually not moving, so you want to get rid of the slow and non-moving wood, and work from there same when you're hollowing out a form. So the same works for goblets. You can start with a push cut, you can do that, of course you can, but my, my argument is that you don't know quite how far down you're going. So if you drill a depth hole then that gives you a guide to know where you have to hollow to. So you can use a handheld drill like this. My preferred method for both safety and accuracy is what we call a Jacob's Chuck. Now not everybody's got one, they're about I don't know, 15 pounds uh, sterling, it's not, not greatly expensive and you get them with a morse taper that fits into your quill of your tailstock. That fits in there and then you get a drill bit of whatever size you want. You just take one for now. <laughs> I haven't got any drill bits here. Excuse me. Bear with me a second, just going off camera to get a drill bit. You could use whatever size drill bit you want, obviously. Um, this, this is just a, a 10 mil, okay? So you've got your Jacob's chuck in your quill. And then Just open up the jaws, put the drill in, and you know where I'm going, you newer turners. It is so much easier and safer to do it this way. Okay, so tighten up the drill bit in the chuck. Now, this this um, Jacob's chuck has not got a screw thread. I can't run it through, so you've got to hold on take light cuts, don't go mad on the RPM either, and then all you have to do, I mean you can put a bit of tape around it, whatever, I'm looking to go about there, something like that, so I just, just eyeball it, and I just put a little mark on there, and I know that's how far I want my drill to go. Now again for speed, the type of drill bit you've got depends. If it's a force and a bit, obviously a lot slower. But I, I think for drilling around the five, six, seven hundred revs is fine. Hold on to the Jacob's chuck and just advance nice and slowly. And don't forget, which is something I forgot, don't forget to make sure your drill bit is tight. <laughs> the wonders of live television. Okay. So make sure your drill bit is tight in your chuck and hold on to the chuck to stop it spinning out of the quill and advance. Now I know what you're going to say, you're going to say, you're going to say, oh a, a little aside, just aid with that squeaking and you get that quite a lot when you're doing uh, hollow forms, when you're taking out say three quarters of an inch hole. Just put a bit of beeswax on it and that just reduces that squeaking noise. Now I know that the red mark's here because I've it, it's tur it's moved because I tightened up the, uh, the chuck. Top tightened up. See, it, it reduces it. Now on a piece this small, you don't really have to worry about 
ejecting each time and clearing the swarf because it's only a very small depth so that's not a problem so that's how easy that is it is really a very simple method and I find a very effective method so that's that's that the other way of course is to use your the gouge that you're using uh, and to do a plunge cut now that's not a problem I find that a very good method but it does take a bit of practice and my advice to anybody who hasn't done something before when you do a practice do it at a slow RPM because if you do have a catch or something it is hardly noticeable if you like you're not going to have things flying off the lathe so if you're trying out a new cut or you're trying out a new method turn the lathe down that's my opinion now for hollowing you can use a, a number of tools and again I'm going through the various ones with you you can use a scraper to hollow out you can use a bowl gouge to hollow out 3 8 bowl gouge you could use a half inch spindle gouge you could use a 3 8 spindle gouge and you could even use if you want to be really silly you could even use a skew chisel to a point okay now if you're using a a, a scraper there's nothing wrong with doing it somebody said to me in the very early days that when you whatever method you use to get to your final product it doesn't matter because nine times out of ten unless they're another wood turner the people who are looking at it or buying it don't care they don't care if you use a bent screwdriver and I think that's very good advice uh, most of you that follow me will know that the majority apart from one of my scrapers are all negative rake and this is a 3535 but the same principle applies if you have an, an ordinary scraper with one caveat if you've got an ordinary scraper you lift the handle okay purely for safety reasons you lift the handle now with a negative rake scraper you don't need to do that you need to do it as when the tool is on horizontal you want to be smack on center so we'll start the lathe up and it would re it's, it's really a can you see all right there? Yeah, it's a sweeping motion. So we just go back and forth. Let's turn the revs up a little bit. We're doing 800 revs. Okay, 1300 revs. Just back and forth. Back and forth. Okay, so you just go on down. I never, I've never used a scraper to hollow out, but you can be done. Not so effective, I would agree, with a negative rate because you have a finer edge on it. The other method is to use uh, the back hollowing method using your gouge. Again, you're using that part of your wing, and all you're doing is a nice move my hand so you can see the other way that is back hollowing the other way is to do a push cut and the push cut needs a little bit more concentration a push cut is basically like hollowing a little bowl it's just Clean that bit up there. Just clean the edge up. I'll tell you something as well, which is never a bad idea in my opinion. When you're turning something like this, you can use your parting tool to sort of decide, decide approximately what size or what width of walls you want or thickness of walls. So let's just say there. Okay. Plunge in. And that gives you a guide of how thin or thick you want to be. Now that has two advantages. It also gives you a nice shoulder to, I'll turn the lathe off, shoulder to get your bevel. So, why not use your parting tool to make a series of cuts like that? This is just a, an option, another way. And again, and it doesn't matter, we've done that, we still go in, we don't need to go in there, but we will. So I want to give you this as a, as a theory, if you like. Okay, so now, 
there is much, much less chance of us skidding. So we we can now put the put the gauge in, and we've got a safety net, if you like. As I say, the push cut is one way. I do prefer the pull cut. It's very difficult with the equipment to hang it over it. Um, the pull cut, as I say, I just prefer it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make this handle a bit smaller. Here we go. We've got more room then. I normally would do it overhand, but for the camera and for the so you can see what I'm doing. Once you get the cut from the inside, uh, in the centre, once you start the cut, you want to stay on the same plane. I'll just turn off here. I'm guilty of this as well. What happens quite often, when you're, when you're moving towards the rim like this, your hand is either dropping or raising. You want to keep it, once you pick up that cut, at the start of the cut, you want to maintain your tool on the same plane throughout the cut and that way you won't fall off the cut and are less likely to get a cap. So I'm very, very conscious that I'm keeping my handle at the same aspect to the bedways. And as I, I mean, you can't really see here, this is why I missed my camcorder. Um, the surface is more than acceptable. I could start, I could start um, sanding there at about 180. So what I'm going to do now is just carry on with a bit of hollowing, and hopefully we don't get a cat. Now the same thing applies to goblets as with bowls. If you're doing a bowl, um, not thin but thinnish, you want to finish the rim towards the middle because what happens is you're losing stability as you go thinner. So you want to finish off the edges first and work your way to the middle of the bowl. And the same thing here, but we're not going really thin. But you can see what the advantage is now because here, let's just get that light there a bit. This little piece here has, let's do this, this little shoulder here has dictated the thickness of the walls of my goblet. I mean, praise be if they're equal all the way down to the bottom, but that's what we aim for. Um, so we know that we mustn't go any less than that. If you do, it doesn't really matter because all you do is tidy up if you get a catch and start again and maybe the goblet will end up a little bit shorter. Well that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to carry on with um, push cut. check. Now from here down to about this area it's quite smooth, quite happy with that. Um, I'm going to work on the bottom obviously. Um, I think at this stage again it might be an idea and we'll stop and have a quick um, Q&A. I think this is a good idea to do that because if you have any questions then um, I can address them before you forget. just going to take a quick drink. I'm going to show off now. I'm going to put my logo up. Look, just for a second. While I'm having a drink, you see. And you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> and then we'll go back to... There, there we go. Um, 
I'll tell you, off, off, going off piste a little bit, I've really found it so exhilarating with a new format, this, this live thing. There's so much to learn. And luckily I'm on furlough, so I've got the time to learn it. Um, it is really great. Have a vape, Mike, and chill. You're doing great. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I would only do that off camera. I wouldn't do it, do it on camera. You're upgrading from an over Comet 2 MIDI to a Laguna Reva. Whoa, what? To an 1836. I can't wait for my new lathe. Well done, Levi Wirick. Excellent. Lovely, lovely lays. Lovely lays. Hello, Mr. Oliver. How are you, Ed? Are you well? Nice to see you. Yeah, record power do great. Great lays. Um, they're really, I mean, there are a few uh, not so good lays, but most manufacturers nowadays really produce good quality stuff. They really do. I mean, obviously, everybody has, everybody has their favourites. Um, things have gone on a lot since uh, over the last 20, 30 years. Oh, good. Glad to hear it, Ed. Loved your burl the other day. That was brilliant. Lovely metal burr, should I say. You do extremely well, Mike. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Leisure. That's very kind, mate. That's very kind of us. Thank you. But, yeah, um, Grant, so much to learn. I don't know if you're talking about live streaming or, or turning in general. <laughs> There's a lot to learn on both, and I'm still learning on both of them. But, um, hello, the wood doll. Oh, well, how are you? Nice to see you. Sunny, sunny Florida. We've got, we got sunny Bedfordshire, sunny UK at the moment. We're quite good. We're doing not too bad. Um, you've got a one-way. Nice one, Harold. One-way 1640. I am impressed. I'm jealous as well. Extremely jealous. Um, but going on to the... Um, back to the boring part of the streaming here. As I say, it's a learning curve for me. Um, I mean, obviously I will do it as I want to do it, but I would like guidance, uh, I'll say guidance, if somebody thinks something should be added or whatever, um, please leave a comment. I will read all the comments when this stream stops, because I'm obviously very interested in trying to get as good as I possibly can. The only good thing about it, you can't stop me talking. You can turn me off, yes, that's true. But, um, Hello Colin, Mr. French, are you well? Nice to see you. I'll have to be honest with you, because uh, I would say 99% of the people here, I, I've heard your names and I, I know you from being um, subscribers of mine. Uh, there's only 277 people watching now, but there were 300 not in the beginning. So I don't know, <laughs> I'm not bothered for the first one, there might be too much talking, too much interaction, I don't know. Um, but it is a beginner's, it is basically for newer turners and obviously the more experienced turner hasn't got a lot of interest in that, which is fair enough, you know, that, that, it's not, not fair. <laughs> Thank you, George. Mr. Mike, stop talking, that'll be the day. Yeah, you're not wrong there, mate. Ian, I have to say, I think you have got it spot on, lighting and sound. That's great, Ian. Coming from you, who's a bit of an perfectionist and things like that, that that's great. Um, actually, this is uh, to Ian. I, I, I've got to um, Le uh, Le Max or Le Lavalier mics, call them what you will. Can't get them to be recognised on my laptop, but I have a, a splitter coming. Maybe that'll work. But I'll be honest with you, I've, I'm really. What's that? Um, everybody's disappeared. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, I don't know what's happened here. Um, all of a sudden, I've been asked to start Zoom. I don't want to start Zoom. What is going on here? Excuse me. Well, that's, sorry, that's really weird. I've just, just had a massive page come up in front of me, start Zoom meeting, and I haven't pressed anything, so I don't know what's going on here. Right, okay. Sorry, back to business. Um, lost my thread now. <coughs> oh, you're still there. Good man. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, I don't know what happened. My screen just went completely with the Zoom. I don't know if it's hacked or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, no problem.
Hi Scott, thank you very much mate, thank you very much. Um, I think what I'll do now is go back to finishing hollowing this bowl and start working on the stem and then we'll stop again for any questions that you might have. So I won't see anything, just carry on chatting amongst yourselves. I'll carry on turning, as they say. Uh, we'll have that one, I think, for the hollowing. Okay, so I'm just going to start again. And we're about halfway down the bowl. The thickness is okay. See, I got a judder there, and you can see what happened. I just messed it up slightly. Sorry it didn't fly off, ladies and gentlemen, but um, there you go. Nothing's perfect in this life. <laughs> now, when that happens, ugh, all it was, I lost the cut a little bit, and... Yeah, back to normal. It just just moved it ever so slightly. It's got a nice little catch in there, which you can't see. If this was a video, you'd be able to actually see the catch as well. Okay. The other thing is I normally would have a light in there and the light would be better. Okay, we're virtually there. There's a little tiny little lump there. I'll tell you what, what I'll do. I'll do what I would normally do. Um, this is again a negative, let's see if I can show a negative rake scraper. Um, it's a little half inch ordinary scraper which I turned into a negative neg a negative rake 35-35 and I just made it um, curved as you can see there, and I use that for cleaning the inside of my bowl, of my uh, goblets, which I'll do now. But I have to give it. Do I have to give it a quick? No, should be all right. Let's just see. Let's do it. Just. I'm a great advocate for the negative rake because I'm uh, I'm a chicken. <laughs> no, I think they give an excellent finish. Um, straight off the floor. And they are much, much less prone to grab than a standard scraper. And uh, the only downside is, of course, because you have a much sharper edge, or a more acute edge, they don't last long. But for tidying up cuts, um, they are brilliant. difficult with all the equipment around here. Any excuse. Okay, so I'm, I think am I, yeah, I'm quite happy with that bowl. It's, uh, it's good enough. Okay, so the bowl is hollow. Um, now what I would normally do now is sand the inside. I'll do a little bit of sanding. Uh, start there, I should think. We could actually start there at about 180. I would normally go up to 600 or go up to 320 and use Yorkshire grit. Um, but on this occasion, all I'm going to be doing is a quick sanding uh, just to get rid of the, the worst of it. Now, normally I would have, I'll tell you what I'll do, I won't put my extractor on because it'll be too noisy. I'm going to put my respirator on while I'm doing the sanding. And you can talk about it yourselves for a minute. You just do some very 
purse resounding to get some sort of a finish on there. And don't forget the edge. I'll give it a quick quick dab of 320 and call that a day as far as sanding is concerned. The only reason I'm doing it is um, just to show the method that I use for my finishes or the method I use to finish a piece. Not all the time, but it is normally. Okay, so that's... Uh, didn't spend a lot of time on it. That's, that's down to 320. Uh, now I just use a bit of um, pre-mixed sanding sealer. Side. Now it depends on the wood. As I say, this chestnut is quite a wide grained wood, so it will soak in the sealer more readily than a tighter grained wood. So maybe, maybe two coats under normal circumstances. And the whole idea of sealer is to, as it suggests, seal the wood and uh, give a nice foundation for your finish of choice, whatever it may be, what wax you may be using. Now at this stage, if I was going to use Yorkshire Grit, which I won't purely for time, time uh, reasons, I would use Yorkshire Grit when that had dried, and then you use the Yorkshire Grit there's plenty of videos including one one or two from me of how to use it and it does give a really good finish ready for waxing but what a lot of people make the mistake they don't let it dry they don't they don't leave it you don't have to leave it for hours obviously it's only a few minutes but you've got to leave it that time otherwise when you put the wax on it's not completely hardened and cured if you like so a bit more time spent gives good results okay so that's just about right. And now just a very quick sliver of wax. Somebody's, somebody's nicked. Where's it gone? So a quick sliver of wax in there. And the reason I'm doing this is to say that normally when you do a goblet, it is good practice, in my opinion, to finish off the inside before carrying on with the rest of the goblet. And the reason for that is that this is not going to be a long stem thin goblet, but if you're doing anything that's a little bit going to be a bit fragile, you need to put some support, bring up some support in the end. And I normally put up, uh, bring up the tailstock with a tennis ball in. There are various different methods. You can use a comb, maybe you can do a, turn a comb to your live centre. There are many different methods. So just let that go off a little bit and we'll just polish that up. And then that's the inside done. And as I keep saying, the reason of, for this video is the method I use not so much the finished the finished object the finished piece everybody has different methods of doing things um, that's why I'm going to try and show you a couple a couple of different methods so how are things going with everybody Well, I'm amazed. I've got 293 stalwart people watching this. It's brilliant. Good evening, Glyn. Sorry I didn't see you join. 
<laughs> Sarcasm for Mr. Jacobson. Oh, great, Glyn is here. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my sentiments exactly think. Just, uh, Carl, make sure he doesn't use any, if he ever comes over to the States again and visits, make sure he doesn't use any of your garden furniture. Because it's only going to be useful for firewood after Glyn's used it. <laughs> He loves me, Mike. Oh, Carl loves you. Well, yeah. I believe, I believe it, Glenn. Thank you, David Bamford. Appreciate that. Thank you. I've already learned a lot. I shall do things a little bit differently, organisation-wise. I thought I had everything organised and I couldn't find a screwdriver or my hand machine can opener to open the wax. Okay, I assume, l looking by it, um, uh, up to now nobody's got any questions, I would assume. So I'll just carry on now and go to the overhead camera and start whittling my, my way down with the shape of the goblet. Oh, thank you, Gareth. I'm glad you liked it. Gareth Dalton, <laughs> he unfortunately won the Marley Burr Bowl that I did for Maker Central um, last year or the year before. Um, shame that, you could have won some really good stuff, couldn't you? <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's go to the overhead. Okay, so we've, we've basically got the shape of the bowl. Um, we need to do a little bit of uh, refining here. Now, I was talking about support. Now, this is not essential, but I find it a really good method, and I've been using it for years. Just a humble tennis ball in your live, in your live center, and this happens to be a one-way center, but I was very fortunate to get from a subscriber of mine a few years ago. It was very kind of him. Um, and I use it a lot, and I use it for this. You can use a regular live center not it's not going to puncture because you're not putting a lot of pressure literally put that into the um, into the goblet bowl and then just lightly bring up the tailstock and lock it off now what that does especially when you are doing a thinner stem it gives a little bit of support but as you can appreciate if you're going on a very thin stem you want virtually no pressure this way otherwise you're going to warp um, you, you're going to bend the stem essentially so it, it is really through experience look I can actually turn that in there not a problem it doesn't need to be any tighter than that just to give that a little bit of support okay so I'm going to go again with my half inch spindle gauge I'm normally so organized but not today okay I'm going to build my half inch spindle gauge and I'm going to carry on shaping this bowl. Let's have a quick drink and I'll be back. Okay, so what I like to do now is to just take away uh, some of this, this wood here to allow me to work. Again, turning it around 1500 revs, you don't need to go any much, much more than that. But just nice easy cuts. Put your face shield on, good idea. Okay. And just work away nice and steadily. All I'm doing here, I'm just riding the bevel, lifting the handle, getting the cut, and then moving towards the centre. Take it away this wood. Now you can already see it's starting to form. So what I want to do now is just follow that contour. Now a nice touch here, notice I haven't sanded the outside yet, so don't worry, there's a little lump there, I'm not worried that will sand out easily, no problem at all. At this point, 
we're going to be going for a stem, I should think, about about so wide, something like that. Nothing, nothing really thin. But at this point, you have you can make a decision. I could just round that off a bit because that's a bit clumpy there. Just pick up the cut. It's better. Still. Just want to round that over. It's always some, always something to give you a little bit of a. Okay, at this point here, we could uh, start to decide whether we want a little. I call them a fillet, actually. Where if I get my three eighths gouge which has a 45 degree grind this is not the detail gouge but the spindle gouge that enables me to refine the cuts without getting any interference Okay, um, where will we carry on down here? Now I'm going to come in. There, pick up the cut and scoop. Now that little bit there, don't worry if you haven't got a detail gauge, this is a 30 degree, that allows me to get in there and do a really fine cut without snagging the goblet. And that just gives me that little fillet Just a little bit of detail. I'll just check I haven't got raggedy edges. No, that's good. Okay, so that is a little feature which I've done. And you could just go straight into the stem if you wish. Now what I would do, under all the circumstances at this stage, is just remove the tailstock a bit and sand up the outside so again I'll do it very quickly I'll just put my respirator on and I'll just sand up to 320 now I, I say I've left it on purpose this little mark here not a problem don't be afraid I was very um, pleased is the word I think I watched a live uh, demonstration by Cindy Drozder who in my opinion is the is the queen uh, the finial queen of high priestess of finials and she spends hours on some of her finials sanding to refine to the perfect proportions that she expects to achieve. So sanding is not a problem. A lot of people say, oh, well, I get it off the tool. Yes, OK, you get it off the tool. That's brilliant. But if you have to make a few little, uh, little changes through sanding, there is absolutely no problem with doing that at all. As I said, the old saying is, 95% of people don't care how you got there, it's what you show them at the end that counts. So I'm just going to put my respirator on, I'm going to do this little bit of sanding, and I'm just starting with 180, and we'll just give it a, a quick sand. And again, I would, whoop, you know, that's one gone, so take another one. I um, would normally use the Hope Pro Sander, but as I say, I'm trying to keep this as a, a beginner's uh, or a newer turner's 
uh, video. And then all you go up to that fillet. You don't have to go any further than that with the sanding because what we'll do, you see, is sand and finish the bowl. Okay, that's 20. Actually, the matter of interest, I'm going to put the extractor on, let me know what it's like, if it's too noisy. Oh. Not too bad, I suppose, but I'll leave it off for the sake of the, uh, your eardrums. Okay, that's not too bad. Now the one thing that I should have told you, which I forgot actually, in the heat of the moment, and I'll just do it very quickly now, it always amazes me, and I've just forgotten myself, it always amazes me, when people do pens, they always go between each grit, every grit goes with the grain, and the same should apply with any um, spindle turning, just to get rid of those radial marks. Now I know I've gone down to uh, 320, I'm just doing my 180 again because I noticed a few radial marks and the reason for that was apart from poor tool control I didn't sand with the grain between each grit so that was, three, uh, that was 180 I'll do the same now with 240 and 320 it, it does amaze me how much I mean I spent a lot more time finishing than I'm showing you here tonight uh, this is not a finishing masterclass, it's a, a goblet method turning video. Uh, so, but it really uh, surprises me how the theory of rubbing, sanding with the grain on a pen isn't carried forward on all spindle turnings because it does make a lot of difference to the finish. It's quite funny actually because although I'm not on a time constraint I feel as if I'm having to rush. Well, I know I don't but it's just the way the way it is. Okay so now once again and the reason this might this might seem a long-winded way of doing it um, doing it in sections but don't forget if you employ this method on all your goblets then when you start doing the thinner goblets and especially when you start doing off center goblets, eccentric goblets, you need to do a section at a time and finish it because you can't go back. Once you've uh, gone down that path, you can't go back. You, you, you can't go back and just tweak it. You might get away with a bit of sanding, but you certainly won't be able to do any turning with your tools because you have no support. So that's why it's important to do a section at a time. And I've just got into the habit of doing it. Okay, so let that dry now. Mike, we'll be getting twitchy about the dusty floor. Yes, I am, Jim. Twitchy is not the word, mate. Michael Stratton, have I ever thought about becoming a production turner? Um, Um, no, Mike, I have not. 
I have the utmost respect and admiration for production turners uh, like our very own homegrown Steve Jones, absolutely incredible craftsman, an artisan of the craft, but um, I, I haven't got the mindset to do uh, production turning at all. I'm lucky to get two, two things the same. <laughs> What's a good recommendation? Finish for goblets that will have alcohol in them. Uh, glass, glass is a good one. Just, just drink out of a glass bowl. <coughs> um, Rust, Rustin's plastic coat is very good. Um, my old mate Chris, uh, Chris Pooey uses that on his goblets. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the uh, of the stream, I don't actually um, do any goblets for use because they're normally in three pieces, so they leak before anybody says anything. <laughs> um, Nobody picked up on that, that's good. Questions for the group. Anyone cutting their own sanding discs with a punch? Wondering how much you save buying a roll of punching them yourself. That's a very good question, actually, worth the effort. I, I think it depends how many you use, how much you use. Um, but yes, you can. There are, there are quite a few good videos on YouTube, actually, of uh, good, good methods of punching out. I punched my own, I to get a large of punch. <laughs> oh dear. You sent it to Coventry, Mike. Yes, I know, nobody, nobody cares, nobody's speaking to me anymore. As long as you're all having a good time, that's all that matters. I can have a drink now, you see. So uh, Make sure I don't drink the sanding seat instead of my Diet Coke. Yeah, with a hole saw, gen uh, Martin, gentle turn, with a modified round hole saw. I've seen that done quite effectively actually on, on a, a video on YouTube. I can't remember who it's from. Okay, while well, you're enjoying yourselves and getting fed up with me, Ian Maud, are you aiming this at new turners? Perhaps you could mention ensuring your tool rest is not going to catch. Uh, yes, um, yeah, very, very good point, Ian. It's not really for it's not a beginner's guide. It's just for the newer turner turning a goblet. But yes, I did say in the very beginning. I think make sure your tool rest doesn't catch your work, which is obvious to most of us, and yet it still happens. It still happens on occasion. Right. Let's change the camera to the um, overhead one. I think. Yeah. Okay. Have a good one, Jim. Jim going? Yeah, Jim, I didn't see you say you were going. Oh, see you, Jim Smithers. Thanks for coming, Jim. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, now put your tool rest up. Make sure that it's not going to catch. Very good point. I'm not being sarcastic. A very good point there, Ian Lord. Thank you. Look, we're not turning. We've got to put wax on first. Right, let's. That has dried off a bit now. Now, because I'm not using Yorkshire grit, you just need to denib, take the little high spots off the um, sanding sealer. You could use a green scotch pad like this. You could actually use, I mean, I've only gone to um, 320, was it? Yeah, 320. Uh, you could use the last grit that you sanded with, if you wish. Um, and that has the same effects. Just to flatten the surface to take your wax or whatever you're going to be using. And again, when you're when you're applying wax, not too fast to begin with, and just nice and evenly, not too much pressure at this stage. All you're doing is wanting to get an even streak for free application of the wax. Whatever wax you use. Okay, and let that cure a little bit, and then give it a buff up, give it a couple of minutes, a couple of three minutes. There's already a bit of a shine there, especially if I put this light on. God, look at that shine. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the reason I'm not using Yorkshire grit is purely and simply a time factor. It's not, uh, Ed, this only try and cause trouble between me and Glenn. I've mentioned Yorkshire grit, that I use it nine times out of ten um, but for this this is not a this is about the goblet not so much the finishes Sandy this punch the, the big thing with Yorkshire grit we'll come back to my face for a second the big advantage with Yorkshire grit especially 
not for the only reason, but especially if you haven't got what I would term adequate dust extraction, and again for the newer turner, Yorkshire grit cuts down on the fine sanding dust because you merely have to sand to 240 stroke 320 depending um, and that's it because it's the 400 the 600 and possibly even the 800s if you go that far that have that produce the very fine particles that are airborne and they stay in the air and even if you've got an air filtration system you will be surprised how much stuff gets trapped in that filter um, so Yorkshire grit because of its the way it is, it's, it, it is um, apart from being an abrasive paste, if you like, which it it, it um, breaks down as you continue to move it, move your cloth or paper towel up and down the work with the Yorkshire grit applied. It breaks down to very fine particles. I believe it's between a thousand and twelve hundred grit. But it is not the cure all for everything. You have to sand to a good finish prior to using it but it cuts down on that fine dust, so I highly recommend it for that. But in its own right, it leaves a superb finish ready to apply your wax of choice. <coughs> Gareth Dalton, yeah, I mean, Yorkshire Grit is brilliant, it really is. It is It is a really, the only time I, I one of the rare times I don't use it, because I haven't got the patience to pick it, to pick it out of a burr, or uh, pieces that have got very heavy figure, uh, inclusions, etc. <laughs> nice one Terry yes Ed uh, all punching out discs now ok let's go back to camera one ok so again now that's virtually gone off now up to about 13 1400 revs and just buff him off now this isn't going to give a superb finish because I didn't sand it adequately and I didn't use your chagrin of course but it just gives a bit of a sheen and it shows even if you just put sanding sealer on sand it sanding sealer to th only sand to 320 you still get you get a bit of a showing um, and it, it, it feels quite smooth it's not too bad no tool marks not that I can see anyway Notice I've got the camera out of focus. Okay, so let's go back and continue. Again, making sure, thank you for that, Ian. Uh, making sure that your tool rest is free of your work, especially if you're roughing down, of course. Okay, and now we will get rid of the sanding apparatus. Two seconds. Quick drink. And then we'll bring up the old tennis ball that oh, fell on the floor. Okay, bring up the tail stock. The, the reason for, as I say, for the tennis ball, it is not essential for a goblet of, of this type, really. It's all right, just got all bits in there. Um, but it does give that little bit of stability, which is always handy. But not too much pressure. Okay, let's get your tool rest set, it, set up. And all we're going to be doing is working our way down the stem. And there are various ways of doing that. Again, I tend to like using my half inch spindle gouge, but you could use a half inch, uh, a quart, three eighths bowl gouge, whatever you feel happy with. Okay. So again, revs around. 1500 and all we want to do now is get rid of this wood to about there and that's where the base will start to come up. So just nice easy cut, lift the handle all we're doing here is hogging away wood move your body, pick up the cut Now, what I would suggest is, again, work in sections. Get in the habit of working in sections, 
not so critical for a gobbler of this nature but when you get to the thinner stems very important to work on a section of the sign an inch to an inch and a half an inch really now we're going to start getting to the thickness or diameter of the stem now I want to keep that fillet obviously so what I've got to do now is to go in pick up the cut on this and move my body just I want to try and get I want to try and get that curve nice to Just very light cuts. And that gives quite a nice shape. Just undercut there. Now I'm going to need to quickly sharpen, or shall I say touch up, and I use, as you most probably know by now, the Solby Pro Edge. And what I love about the Solby Pro Edge is it is so quick. Put it in there, lock it in, and literally a couple of passes. Job done. Perfect edge every time. And you'll see, well I will see a difference. As soon as you feel your tools need a sharpen, Believe me, it means they do. Perfect. Now, again, just keep hogging away the wood. You see, even sorry, on the long way, still the overhead. Even on um, on this, you could actually make a very short stem goblet, um, and and even leave it there. You know, if if you should so wish. But uh, we're going to go a little bit deeper than that, a bit a bit further than that. I can't impress enough how important it is. to keep sharp tools all the time. One of the biggest problems that people find, or they cause themselves, is because their tools aren't sharp. And it makes the experience so much more, so much more pleasant. So we go back. Nice easy cuts. Now at this stage, I would use my skew chisel normally to just refine that, but I'm not going to do that because I don't think that a, a the newer turner it's not a necessary it's not a necessary um, step. You can get a very smooth stem without doing that. Now you can see already I'm doing this concave. Oops! See, like, why did I get a why did I get a slide there? I didn't I didn't get my bevel. We'll just get rid of that. I should, what you should do is go in at 90 degrees, establish the cut, twist, there's my bevel. I've got my bevel now so I'm not going to skate backwards. Lift the handle, twist very slightly. Now you can see here that I think you'd agree that already I could turn round and say that's it. Just a little bit of um, little bit of sanding, and I could say, right, that's the goblet. Thank you very much. So, 
that hasn't taken very long at all. How long have you been going? Hour and a half with talking in between. So, you know, we've basically done a goblet. I'm going to go a bit deeper because I want to show you the options for the base very quickly as well. Now, I like, as I say, a... Um, a concave base. That's the sort of base I prefer. I think that looks much nicer. I don't know if you can see it there, look. There we go. Where it goes in. Now you can, you see sometimes where the base goes that way convex i always think that looks a bit clumpy on any goblet i've seen but that's just me personally and don't forget you're turning to please yourself not customers unless you're a professional turner so that's what i aim at now for a bowl that size to be honest with you that's a little bit short so we're going to go a little bit deeper and again just hogging away wood that's all i want to do just get rid of wood And then it, de it depends what you want to do. You know, you can just leave it like this, nice and plain. You can put a little bead on it if you want to. Play around and look, at the end of the day, if you get a catch and you ruin it, does it matter? Not really. It's loads more wood. Um, practice on wood that you have no problem messing up nice easy strokes now there's a bit of a bulge there I'll tell you what I will show you because it, it, it's not um, it's not kudos it's, it's just very it's a very capable way of, of if you just hold I can't do it with this actually <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not capable at all. Let's change the tool rest. Just to show you that it, it is a very good way of um, finishing up on your there we go. So what you do is you put your thumb on your skew and you don't need to do it here, but you put your hands behind. If, if the tennis ball wasn't there, which we will demonstrate, there is now no tennis ball. So we're now working without a safety net. Not exactly 100 feet in the air, mind you, but nevertheless. Now, if you... You can see... <laughs> There you go, ladies and gentlemen. It was, um, it had to happen, and I'm so pleased. Excuse me, I am really happy about that. Let me. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely no break. There we go. A you kiss, goblet. Thank you. I am over the moon that this happened because I had. <laughs> You've required people asking, please, could you make it fly? Yes, I did. And I tell you something, you're not going to believe me, there's actually a crack in there. You don't, you don't believe me, do you? <laughs> anyway. Ah, my goodness me. You see, the, the thing is, let, let me just show you something. Stay, stay where you are. Please don't go just yet. <laughs> Ask yourself, how can a man that can turn a goblet like that not turn a little piddly goblet like that? That's, that's what I ask. Anyway, um, I hope everybody's happy. <laughs>
Oh dear, oh dear. Well, the um, the situation is as follows. Hang on a minute. Um, I've just missed something there. Definitely missed something. I think. No, I didn't. No, you're okay. Oh, Jim Smithers, thanks very much. See, it took me to break a goblet for, for Jim to make his contribution to my channel. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate it. Danny boy, I'm just starting and we're turning. Well, that's good. I'm glad because um, it shows it happens to the worst of us as well as the best of them. <laughs> um, there we go. You see, a two-piece goblet is a wonderful thing because you have loads and loads of options with that loads of options and I lost one bill of fix at some stage but yeah I think you get the idea work your way down the goblet <laughs> try not to break it of course but what happened there to be honest with you was I went a little bit thin on the um, on the stem for the size of the bowl without support although it's not anywhere near as thin a stem as I've done which is not trying to get out of it I mean I messed up and that's fine Everybody messes up, and at the end of the day, if it happens, it happens, and there's nothing you can do about it. Thanks, Danny, I appreciate it. Very fine of you, mate. And, you know, it, it, I, I went through a vase the other week. You know, it, it's not the end of the world. I'm fortunate, as a lot of you are, really, because we don't make a living at what we do. It's a hobby, it's an enjoyment, and if you make a mistake like that it's not going to cost you your livelihood or putting food on your table or paying your mortgage or whatever so you put it down to a learning experience um, and if for, I've, I've put quite a few of my errors up on ordinary videos on YouTube I've never got a problem with that because it, it, it's what happens to everybody you know cut off the stem and you have a cut <laughs> put the pills in how do you know I take pills anyway Byron I do actually but um, Hiya Donald, how are you? Very nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Martin, yes, I would love a goblet t-shirt actually. Um, <laughs> thank you Ivor, that's very kind of you, I appreciate it. <laughs> you mean you only giggled because I broke the goblet Ivor? That's a bit, that's a bit harsh mate, a bit harsh, I think. <laughs> Probably your fault Ian, yeah. The thing was, I was under a lot of pressure. Um, not, not, excuse me, I'm just going to put this down a bit. I was under a lot of pressure, not, uh, not to make a good video, but to, to actually let one of my goblets go flying. So I felt, thank you, Tom, you're a star. Thank you so much. I'm glad it made you laugh out loud. <laughs> it always makes me laugh when it happens. And I must be honest, I've been turning goblets for, well, basically since I started turning. And I have, believe it or not, turned quite a lot of nice ones. But I've had quite a lot of accidents with them. And thank you, Silk. Much appreciated. I appreciate it, friend. The tidy's heard of the cake I did. <laughs> Cheers. Um, thank you very much. I, 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 I never get worried with things like that. Huey, you are an absolute legend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, it, it is what it is. It happens, you know. I must admit, when I do a, when I do a goblet in, in public, I'm always concerned that it's going to happen. Um, but I, it, it doesn't worry me, not in the slightest, not in the slightest. Um, Steve has on the break was the first bit I, <laughs> I don't need shooting on it. Okay, all right, Steve, I'm sorry, it was a wasted journey tonight then, because you knew all about breaking goblets, did you? <laughs> oh, dear. Thank goodness you didn't have to pay to watch this, eh? <laughs> actually a lot of people do pay to watch things like that with me thank you Mark I really appreciate it thank you so much as I've said uh, and I sincerely mean it every penny that I get from any of these super chat um, contributions to the channel will when they amount to an amount or whatever will go to improve the video um, situation that I could do because there's no argument about it it is it is quite I'm, I'm not sticking my uh, begging bowl out at all it's not cheap to do that because you, you do need certain bits of um, kit to get a decent um, uh, quality and, and learning at my age learning what I've had to learn over the last four or five days 
Thank you very much, Thomas. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I've learned an awful lot, and thank you very much to my friend Scott Wall, who spent two late nights doing it on uh, on Zoom with me, and my good friend Martin Saban Smith, who was never, as I keep saying, never refused a phone call yet. Um, he must cringe every time his his, his mobile goes because it's me on the end saying, "Just a quick chat. Can you tell me? Can you tell me?" Um, but they they've been absolutely wonderful. Um, that Mike's my. I hope you design. Thank you, Steve. Oh, very kind, Steve. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. <laughs> Breaks. Yes, that is awesome. Thank you so much for having the courage. I've got humour to do that. <laughs> I've got to have courage and humour to do it because it happens so often, you see. <laughs> Steve Jeremiah, you are so kind. Thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate it. TX51210, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Mr. Jacobson, I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Tommy Turner, thank you. I really appreciate it. It's very kind. Oh, I tell you what, with the... <laughs> no, it's all right, Ed. If you didn't laugh, you wouldn't be human. And you certainly wouldn't be my good friend, Ed Oliver, if you didn't laugh. <laughs> but uh, I laughed. It's <laughs> Oh, dear. I'll tell you what, Tony P80, uh, it's not this, I don't, I don't need a t-shirt, I could turn in the nude and break a goblet mate, I don't need anything like that. Ian Leonard, thank you very much indeed, I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> well I, I know it's been entertaining, but... Uh, <laughs> and there's still 300 of you there, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, the turning, unfortunately, is finished for the night. It, it, it finished a bit earlier than I expected. Uh, if you have any questions on a serious note, not that you would take any of my answers as being uh, of any help after that display, but no, seriously, if you have any questions, please ask them, um, and I will do my best to answer them. See so, yeah, you back on. Nice one, Joseph. Yes, th thanks for that, mate. A really, really important and excellent answer to my problem. <laughs> I think the answer to my problem, Joseph, is turn a bit better. Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft, thank you sir, very much indeed. Much appreciated. I am, um, by the way, <laughs> and it's got to be goblets for quite a while, I am thinking of doing one of these a week. Glyn Senior, you are a, a gem, thank you mate. It doesn't go anywhere near the cost of replacing that chair, mind you. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Cheers. Much appreciated. Um, <clears throat> can you show me the goblet with the narrow stand, please? Yes, certainly, Oliver. Not a problem, mate. Um, well, well the, the, there's the tenon. <laughs> uh, hang on a minute. Look, here we are. Uh, there you go. There it is. Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. Look, wonderful. It's very hot in here, so it's starting to wilt. And there's the base. <laughs> it's actually, it's one of those. That is a candle here. You light that, okay? You dip it in oil, you light it, and this, this puts, the, puts the flame out when you go to bed. And if you didn't know that either, I just don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> oh dear. As a new history, I was getting a bit dis despondent with all my mistakes. Bill Farrell. Never be disappointed with mistakes. I mean, the, the old cliche: every mistake is a learning, uh, is a is a lesson learned. But take it from me: it's a lesson, but it's not always learned because I have a lot of lessons I haven't learned. Glenn Crandall, thank you so much. Really appreciate it from the US. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I think that's the thing with wood turning, from from my point of view anyway. I've been turning eight years, whatever. I haven't spent nearly enough time behind the lathe. The hours I've turned are most probably a lot less than a lot of you guys out there watching, because I work normally. It's only that I'm furloughed now and I've got all this extra time that I've managed to, to, to get stuff in a bit more. But it's like anything else. It's like a game of golf. You know, you have to practice, 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 get the muscle memory. And uh, nothing, nothing comes without a bit of practice. Good night, Ed. Thank you very much for coming, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you, Grant. Appreciate it. Mr. Pooley's still here, waiting for another 
See you, Glenn. Take care. Thank you very much indeed. That person down with tonight. Couldn't see. Sorry, you got away with murder. <laughs> very interesting. Can't wait for the next one. I could have got away with murder, yeah, but never mind. Just what's the fun in that? Thank you, Mr. Day. Mike Day, that's extremely kind of you. Thank you, sir. Um, I, th I think a lesson to be learned off an old, old timer like me, if you like. Not an expert turner by any means, but never ever get despondent with turning. Good night, good night, Ian. Take care. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for coming. Um, it, it is really. An enjoyable craft and the thing is that you you do get second chances always take the safety precautions because uh, then you live to fight another day you know uh, a goblet flying off is not as bad as a you know a 16 inch bowl flying off if you're not wearing the right you watched it right to the end old faithful good man <laughs> let me tell you something you didn't have to watch it for too long before the end came. The end was a little bit sooner than I'd anticipated, let me tell you. <laughs> but nevertheless, I enjoyed myself. And you're a great bunch and a great crowd. And I've enjoyed it very much. I am intending to do one a week, I'm afraid. So um, uh, <laughs> don't, leave, don't leave answers in the comments below. But I'm, uh, over the next week or two, I'm going to be doing one a week anyway. Thank you, David Weir. I appreciate it, mate. I think you misspelled that. It should be leg end, not legend. <laughs> Good night, Shay. Take care, mate. Thanks very much for coming along. Appreciate it. <laughs> Robin, thank you very much indeed. Look forward to it. Thanks very much for coming. Give my love to, look, give my love to Carl. Give my regards to Carl. And love to you, my darling. Thanks for coming. What's a good wood sealer to use on turnings? Um, sand, cellular sanding sealer, uh, acrylic sanding sealer, depends what finish you want to use, but cellular sanding sealer um, I've used for many years with great success. Thank you, Pat. Glad you enjoyed it. Very kind of you. Grant, thank you. I'm glad. Hope to see you back. What a good small projects to start. Mushrooms little boxes, um, divers, garden divers, anything. As long as you turn in wood and you make something that is either useful or you like looking at, it, it, the job's a good one. Oh, it doesn't matter, Ian Leonard. I'd be upset. Good night to you and thanks for coming. I need to arrange my shifts around your next one. Robin Jacobson. <laughs> oh, you're still here, Robin. That's good. Start again, my Joseph, I will if you stay. Uh, <laughs> might even turn a pineapple. Who doesn't love you? No, I don't love you, Carl. Not anymore. No. <coughs> I've decided I prefer I, I prefer Robin. Sorry. <laughs> Especially since you've shaved your beard off. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jennifer. Well, I've given you the inspiration now, but you can't do any worse than that, can you, my dear? Thank you, Todd. I'm glad you could make it. Thank you very much indeed. I will keep them coming, as long as I'm able. Yes, I'll, I'll be sometime next week. I'm not sure when, but I'll do another live stream next week. Um, and it will be a goblet. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm thinking of doing an off-centre goblet next week. So uh, sorry about that, Carl. I know you're upset. But um, actually, I'm rather impressed that there's only an eight-second lag um, from what I'm saying to what you're hearing and from what you're typing, what I'm seeing. It's not too bad, really. What, turn a pineapple? Yeah, okay, Leisure. If you provide it. No, I'm not. I'm not turning a pineapple. I saw Red turn an apple the other day, which is good. Out of apple. Not wood. Good night, Steve. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, Frederick. Thank you. <laughs> will do, will do, Dave. Thanks very much. And again, give Fee my love. We'll speak soon, mate. You take care. Stay safe. What do I do for a regular job? Um, funny enough, your surname, I'm a driver, a bus driver. I'm on furlough at the moment. I do that, and as a pastime, I just fly goblets. I've got my flying goblet license, so I'm okay. Thank you very much, Ignacio, from Me Mexico, and my best regards from Bedfordshire in the UK. Take care, Ivor, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. Glad you enjoy it. Thank you. Richard Phelan, thank you so much. Much appreciated. 
Paul Lockwood, all in a great evening to <laughs> see many box live shows. <laughs> Thank you. Certainly have a few laughs. Would be interesting to see more on camera video setup. Yeah, okay, you wouldn't want to see my setup at the moment, Paul, because it's very Heath Robinson, but uh, yeah, you know, maybe if you want to, we can have a um, message me. I'm off next week, I'm still furloughed, so if you want to message me, we can have a chat. Thanks very much, Richard, I really appreciate that. You thought I'd retired, Matt? Yeah, I know, I look at, I, should, I could have retired, I'm 69 this year, but I, I love my job that much. <laughs> No, I've got to keep working to keep paying for this hobby. Uh, right, another naked turner. Yeah, another naked turner, yeah. No, there's only one naked turner. And it's not me. No, no, Ma Martin, it wasn't an eccentric goblet because it, it, at one time, it had a straight stem. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Stuart. Okay, good night, Stuart. Stuart Hayes, thank you very much indeed. Up at four. Oh, I will be the week after next, so uh, you have my sympathies. Take care and stay safe, mate. Thanks, Joseph. Okay, I'll look forward to that lesson. <laughs> wood glue? Yeah, I don't think so. don't think wood glue is going to... We'll, we'll hack it with this, to be honest with you. Let's have a drink. <laughs> Digital eccentric, yeah, okay, Martin, you've made your point. I think you're right, actually. Yes, a dig digital eccentric goblet. Yes, that's fine. I'll bow to your superior knowledge. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Smithers. Take care, Jim. Afternoon. Have a good afternoon, mate. And thank you very much indeed. Thanks for coming. <laughs> you keep your nose out of my business, Michael Stratton. <laughs> what kind of wood? Uh, it was uh, broken wood. No, it was um, it was chestnut, and it did actually. And this is no no word of a lie. Have a very small hairline crack in it, but it could be argued that that occurred when it flew off. <laughs> you see, looking at it seriously, that that is not a thin stem. I've done far thinner stems than that before now. Um, there must have been a fault in the wood. I'm sorry. There's definitely a fault in the wood now because I've dropped it again. But um, that is a problem that you can have with a wider grain wood. I mean I wouldn't even att I wouldn't attempt to do an, uh, an off-centre goblet with, with this wood at all. Firewood. Yes, firewood. Wayne, you're right. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. I'm sure Simon will be very, very happy to hear that this has happened. Mr. Jeremiah, I can rely on you to convey. Maybe I'll send him an email and let him know before you get there. <laughs> well, if has anybody got any more questions? Seriously, or have anybody got any questions? I should imagine the newer turners have left now, and it's just the hardy hardy ones who have nothing else to do. I'm going to go off camera for one second just to take a beep. I'll go this way. Shall I go this way? Yeah, I'll go this way. I'm still here. Ah, that's better. Thanks, Mike, excellent. Thank you, Mr. Vogue. John, nice to see you. Thank you for coming, mate. Have a, good, have a good one, Carl. You too. Give my love to Robin again. Thanks very much for coming. I really appreciate it. Great call. Right, mate. Time for a beer. Good man. Okay, Grant. Take care. Thanks very much for coming. I appreciate it. Hope to see you next time. Or in a future one. Mike Angelus. Thank you. I'm glad you were inspired to have a go. I hope you're enjoying your turning journey. Good evening, Richard Chester. It's all over, mate. <laughs> you missed it in the blink of an eye. But I won't hide my talents behind a bushel. There we go. It broke. It's quite funny, actually, because my first public demo, I did an off sender goblet and it broke, and my first live demo on YouTube and my goblet broke. So I, hopefully, 
That'll be it. We won't have any more broken converts. My pleasure, Dominic, and thank you very much for coming, mate. I appreciate it. I was, uh, Richard, yes, I, uh, Richard Phelan, I was turning um, chestnut, which is rather a wide grain wood, and I'll blame it on the wide grain wood. Not me. Good night, keep it crafty. Thanks very much indeed. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Good night, Gunters. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. What time is it? 25? We'll say half past nine unless anybody has um, anything needed to talk about or wants any questions. I did, sadly, I'll watch it back shortly. <laughs> I'm not going to put it up on YouTube. <laughs> yes, of course I am. Uh, yeah, it'll be on YouTube for a week or two. Good night, David Flanagan. Thanks for coming, mate. Thanks, Martin. You stay healthy as well. Stay safe, mate. And look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. Good night, Amanda. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for coming, and I look forward to seeing you next time as well. My next one, John, will be sometime next week. I'm not exactly sure when. Uh, possibly Wednesday night again, I don't know. Maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, Daz Bob Drift. I love that name. Oh, you can find a new lathe. Absolutely fantastic. Superb. The FU230 uh, Daz was brilliant as well, but this is just a different level. I, I will not. I will stand here and be counted. I will never change this lathe. No, well, I'll die before I need to change it. Thank you, Leisure. That's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Yes, it'll be next Wednesday at 7.30 again, I should think. Thanks very much for coming across. Love it. Quick question. Halloween tools. Have a bit of a break since when I was turning out in. Looking at max 12-inch pieces, would you recommend the sign hook stuff for starting out? Yes, I would, Richard. Um, I'm biased because I love them. I've tried various Halloween tools, and the Simon Hope range are brilliant. What I suggest you do, um, Simon is very approachable and very, very uh, generous of his time. Ring up, tell him what you want to do, and he will advise you what he, he would suggest to you the best way for you to go. Um, that's what I would advise anyway. I, I, I very rarely use back hollowing now like I did on this. Uh, I normally use the 6mm mini hollower for small hollowings like, like goblets and that. Thank you, John. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much and have a good night to you as well. Good night, Richard, and thanks very much indeed. Much appreciated. Hope to see you again sometime. A review of your saw table now that you've been using it for two years. Hello, Max. Um, very unlikely that I would review it again. Um, I did the one review. Basically, I tell you what, if, you, if, if you're on Facebook, message me and um, I'll give you a reply on, um, on Facebook, if you like. Not really to do it here, but yes, you know, I, I will certainly pass on how I've found it over the last couple of years. <coughs> Thank you, Brian. Stay please. That's very kind. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick Day. Good night. If I've missed any good nights, please accept my humble apologies. Thank you, Stuart. I'm glad. Uh, shame you couldn't watch it, but uh, we had some fun. Good night, David. Thanks for coming, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you, Eddie Studer. I enjoyed your company too. Thanks for coming, mate. You didn't miss much, David James. <laughs> I got my pilot's license again on my goblet. Good night, Michael. Thanks very much indeed. I will indeed. You stay safe, mate. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Richard, thank you. You are a star. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Gotta take another Diet Coke now. 
Come in, making your steady rest for my ladies. It looks great. Thanks for your bit. Oh, Brian, yes, you've been. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, yeah, you can, with the lights on it. Um, I've had it since I made it. Only thing I've done is raise it each time is, uh, when the lathe bed gets lower from the spindle. But I've still used it. I keep meaning to make a proper one, but that one does the job. Thank you, Marat. Enjoyed your company. Thanks for coming. Hope to see you again. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. And I mean, really appreciate it. <laughs> it's very kind of you. Thank you. Oh, you're from Istanbul. Thank you. Well, well welcome. Well, I, I say welcome. It's nearly the end now, Marat. But thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate that. That's one thing that amazes me, is how many people come from all different parts of the world. I mean, I've known, I've had the pleasure of um, meeting a few uh, of my friends from the ether since I've started turning. But um, this medium is excellent, because uh, distance is no object, is it, basically? Well, I don't know if you have any more questions? I don't think you have. I thoroughly enjoyed the banter. Um, I apologise for a point that it hasn't been a perfect finished piece, but the main thing is that you've enjoyed yourselves, you've had some entertainment and learned a few things along the way. And thank you very much for everybody for coming. Thank you so much for those who've contributed to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you sometime next week, hopefully Wednesday. I'll let you know. Thanks for coming. Good night. Cheers.